Hello everybody, my name is Peter Makovicki. I am Associate Curator of Dinosaurs and also Chair of the Department of Geology at the Field Museum. And I'm Nate Smith, a graduate student in the Geology Program at the Museum and also the Committee on Evolutionary Biology Program at the University of Chicago. And this holiday season, Nate and I will be joining a large international expedition to Antarctica to look for dinosaurs and other fossils. Our goal is to gain a better understanding of Antarctic animals and life during this time and also understand how dinosaurs rose to dominance. So, many people are surprised to hear that we're going to Antarctica to look for fossils, given that it's such a frozen and inhospitable environment today. But that wasn't always the case. Rocks of the Triassic and Jurassic periods from 250 to about 180 million years ago reveal fossils of plants and animals that speak to a very different and much warmer and hospitable environment. At that time, Antarctica was part of a supercontinent called Pangaea, and although it was the most southern point of this supercontinent, it hadn't quite moved over the pole yet. So what is some of the evidence telling us about the geological past of Antarctica? Well, the first fossils to be discovered in Antarctica were actually found by the exploration party led by Robert F. Scott on his famous race to the pole against the Norwegian team led by Roald Amundsen in 1912. Scott's team found fossils of a seed fern called Glossopteris from Permian Age rocks in the central Transantarctic Mountains. Now, it took another 50 to 60 years before vertebrate fossils, those of animals with backbones, were found in the same region. Now, the first dinosaur remains were found in 1991 by geologists climbing to the top of Mount Kirkpatrick. In particular, they found the quarry containing the large meat-eating dinosaur Cryolophosaurus, one of the two dinosaurs that we are returning to Antarctica to continue excavations on. In 2003, I was part of a team that went back to Antarctica to recover more material from the Cryolophosaurus site. We also discovered a brand new site that yielded a large, stocky plant-eating dinosaur that we find at both sites, Glacialosaurus hammeri. Many of these bones are still being prepped in the Field Museum, as you can see here. Unfortunately, tremendous storms in 2003 limited the amount of time that we could spend working on the rock. One of the things we did accomplish during this time was using dynamite to blast away the overlying rock and reveal more of the bone layer. Part of our goal of going back to Antarctica is to remove more fossils from this area. We're going to be using jackhammers and rock saws to cut away large fossil blocks and take them back to the Field Museum for preparation. We're also looking to identify new fossil sites in the area and possibly find some new species unique to Antarctica. So Nate and I would like to invite you to follow our expedition online. To learn more, please visit our website at www.fieldmuseum.org expeditions. And we'll regularly post videos like this one so you can check us out on the Field Museum's Facebook page. You can also post questions there, and each week we'll answer the five most common questions in our written dispatches. So we hope to hear more from you soon.